for counting down the top 10 commander cards from Phyrexia. All will be one. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nipiking Nerds. You could support the Nipiking Nerds at Patreon.com. It's where you give us your direct dollars from your pocket. But wait, that helps make the channel better, and we'll love you as much as we can without making you uncomfortable, just like we love Jesus. Not Jesus. Jesus. Yes, his name is Jesus, and he's one of our patrons, and we do indeed love him. TCG Player is another way to support us. You use our affiliate link in the description below. Buy the same cards you're going to buy anyway. They get delivered just as fast. Nothing changes except for this channel is supported by you buying Magic cards. The neon light gets just a little bit brighter. Unless you want it dimmer. Then it gets a little bit dimmer. And we're sponsored by Moxfield. There's going to be an ad somewhere. Not going to be able to guess where. You're free to try, but you will fail. And happy birthday to everyone whose birthday is today. Now that Amber's here, we can get to the top 10, which is the best cards in the set or the Commander product without counting reprints. Why would we count those? They're not new. Yeah, obviously reprints do not count. So you're not going to see Phyrexian Arena on this list. And you wouldn't see it anyway. I don't think you would. Uh, first and foremost, number 10, Monumental Corruption. Three, Black Black Sorcery. Target player draws X cards and loses X life, where X is the number of artifacts you control. And then a uh, really silly flavor text, funny. I always thought the Phyrexians were a heartless lot. And she prefaced it by saying funny, so you know it's funny. Yeah, that's how exactly how you know something is funny. This card is just a very solid draw engine for a black artifact deck. You get 10 plus artifacts easily in those artifact decks. You draw a ton of cards, and this can just be used as a burn spell later in the game when somebody gets real low on life. Super mega signed in blood. Exactly. So, yeah, it's just, well, we like these five mana, draw a, like, poop load. Even if you got to lose a poop load of life, just make sure your deck can afford to lose, as the kids say, a poop load of life. Poop and life are resources. Number nine is the Eternal Wanderer. In 1v1, absolutely brutal. In Commander, it's going to be okay. And it is a six mana, five loyalty planeswalker. Only one creature can attack her at a time as that little static ability. You can plus one to flicker an artifact or a creature, but it's weird because it only comes back at the end step of the controller of it. And then you can zero to make a 2-2 two -two double striker. You're probably never doing that. And you can minus four, which you're probably doing immediately, to choose one creature each person controls, and the rest gets sacrificed. So you keep your best thing, they keep their worst things, and you're going to feel pretty good about it. Yes, so this is going to take up a board white spot in your deck. And I think that the house home for this, I don't know why I said house, the home for this card is Flicker Decks. It is a has the ability to flicker with its plus. The fact that it can only be attacked by one creature is actually a very relevant way for it to protect itself. If you have three or four creatures on the board, they can only attack one at it. You're always going to probably have at least a decent block in that situation. And if you're a Flicker deck, you can just Flicker the Wanderer and just keep minusing. But stuff like Yorian is just brutal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the things Brago, that flicker, probably, ooh. Yeah, this card is very strong. Um, I it's again, you want to make sure you got a lot of synergy with it because it's not a card you just want to go. Hey, any deck, get in here, Wanderer. No, it's it's the board wipe part of it is pretty medium. It's okay. We have Tragic Arrogance. We have Vanquish the Horde. We have Farewell. So you need a little bit of a reason to play it, but it's pretty good. Yeah. Once you meet the criteria of like, hey, do I have a little extra synergy besides wanting a slightly overcosted board wipe? I'm in. You can put this card in your deck. Like I said, I think Flicker decks are its home. Number eight, we have Phoresis Outbreak. Two and a black for a sorcery. Each opponent gets a poison counter. Then each creature your opponent's control get minus one, minus one until end of turn for each poison counter its controller has. BZ just talked about how much she really liked all these cards that gave away poison counters. Well, what if instead of, you know, drawing two and losing or, or two. Or drawing one. Or drawing one. Instead of that, we got something real. A real tangible benefit where we're wiping our opponent's board. This one can start the chain. This can get the poison counters going to start proliferating, to start poisoning people out of the game. And then if you use it as your chain is already started, now it's a board wipe. So this card is weirdly strongly versatile. It is very niche. Uh, it is exactly infect, toxic, whatever you want to call it type of deck. But when you're doing that, it's perfect. It's probably one of the best cards in your deck. Yeah, I think even some of these like generic proliferate decks that are just have a bunch of cards that say proliferate, you can throw in like Freeze's Outbreak. You can throw in a Prologue to Phyresis or the other black one that I can't remember the name of because it's too new. Then you just start have it like the poison counter just sits there. It's like whatever, I don't need to kill you with poison. But when I start doing my game plan anyway, you're just gonna die. And the closer they are to dying, the more savage this is and the harder it is for them to catch up. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I just really like this exactly for, like you said, I like Toxic. I don't know if I'd put it Go in a first deck. It, it could fit in there, but it 
if you're playing the toxic strategy, like I said, this is just going to be one of your best cards. It's going to be a B plus every single time in the decks that want this card. Yeah, the next one is pretty sweet because it's a website called Moxville.com, and you can go there right now and build your decks. Amber went there the other day and built a 12 land stacks deck. You can go check it out. No, you can't. But if you want to build your own 12 land stacks deck, you can sort everything, tag everything, check the price of everything, use TCG Player or Card Kingdom, and it's just too easy. Yes, and they even have little tiny features that just ease of life. I wanted to build a Rule Zero Elspeth Suns Champion deck. It just has that ability. You unclick the box that says legal commanders, and suddenly you can put anything as your commander. So you can make a Rule Zero deck, still a commander deck, follows the uh, color restrictions, but guess what? It's just whatever card you want it to be, because that's Commander. That's what makes it fun. Yeah, and I think I'm just building I'm building a $20 Ishkana deck right now, but you mentioned Rule Zero. I might just buy the Alchemy Ishkana and then go get the spell book together and shuffle it up so I can play that every once in a while. That would be amazing. Yeah. I would love I would love to see the Alchemy Ishkana. <laughs> Draft a card from Ishkana's spellbook. <laughs> One second. Uh, Excuse me. I also love the idea that that giant spider has a spellbook. Of course. Of course it does. <laughs> All uh, right. We actually have a real number seven. It's yeah. Nissa, Ascended Animist. Three green, green, Phyrexian green, Phyrexian green. Enters with seven loyalty, or five if you pay two life, or three if you paid four life. And you plus one to make an XX where X is her loyalty. You have minus one to destroy an artifact or enchantment. And then you minus seven, which is what she could enter with, to give your creatures plus one, plus one, and trample for each forest you control. Mostly, I view this as a seven minute sorcery. That's a pretty good overrun for mono green. And it's got other things if you desperately need other things. Yeah, exactly. Um, it also can be lower on your curve when you need to be. If you happen to not have a play on, like, say you have five mana and you're, you know, your hand's a little uh, gummed up with your higher drops, all right, play this thing out and start making some creatures. It's also removal for when you need it. It has these other modes that are gravy on top because ultimately, like BZ said, this is just a mono green overrun. Get in there. Now, if you're a deck that for some reason is already super high in force. I can see like a two color deck that wants to play like that is tutoring up Yavimaya every game. I can still see this card being playable in that case. Yeah, yeah. Yavimaya, Ashaya, and then Awaken the Woods are the three wombo combos we talked about that just make this thing go a little bit more hand sandwich. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this card is not broken or busted. I'm not, th I'm not throwing this in a three color deck ever. Never, ever. First thing, it already has four actual green pips. You want to cast <laughs> yeah. it for its full cost. So that's already too much for, for that kind of deck. But. Like we said, it kind of, it cares about forest. It's a forest matters type of card. Yeah, and it's an overrun that can be something else. I like that you can go, oh, you know, I played Land of Elves and then Wild Growth, and now it's turn three and I have nothing better to do. Oh, here's Nissa. I'll start plusing it. That's yeah. actually kind of real. Exactly. Next one is a really cool card. I actually love this design. It's Glimmer Lens. One in the white for an equipment artifact. For Mirrodin, comes in, make a 2-2, equip this to it. Whenever equipped creature and at least one other creature attack, draw a card Equip for one in the white. I looked at this card a couple times and thought, well, this card looks whatever. And then I started realizing it comes out for two mana. It comes out super early. It's a body by itself because of the thing. You don't have to equip it. And then you can just start getting in early. As long as you have one other creature, you're drawing a card. I think this deck, this card definitely is going to have great homes in decks like Ishan. Ooh, or Ishan. Yeah. Early, you know, you got things like Thraben Inspector or like Sarah Sennett or Weather Wayfarer that could come down. And then, I mean, I would want to be cognizant of that when I build my deck having this card in it. But mostly, you're not going to draw this card on turn two, and then you're going to play it, and you're going to draw a card pretty much every turn for the rest of the game. Yeah, and if you really need it to like keep drawing and keep going, it, you can move it. You don't have to keep it on your tutu. Put it on a flyer that can more reliably attack and get in. Obviously, this is going in a deck that has lots of attackers, probably some disposable attackers, so that sometimes you can just throw away a 1-1 to attack and draw a card. And it survives board wipes. Very true. You can play it in creature-heavy decks that want a ton of creatures on the board, but this thing is an artifact, so though the creature will go away from the board wipe, you'll still have the equipment around. We'll also still have number five, Conduit of Worlds. Doesn't add a board wipe, so you can play lands from your graveyard, and you can tap it, and if you haven't cast a spell this turn, uh, Conduit of Worlds being a two green green artifact, <laughs> you uh, can cast a spell from your graveyard, and then you can't play other spells. So if you got a giant X spell, you pour all your mana into it, if you got some kind of big thing, or you got nothing better to do, great. Or... Play a four mana Crucible of Worlds with other words on it. Exactly. Yeah, I like that this is just another type of Crucible of Worlds effect that you get in your green decks that has tangible advantage over Crucible of Worlds. You, on the turns when you don't have anything better to do, you only have a big X spell in your graveyard, or you just, your, your best play is from your graveyard. You just get to do that. This is not a, you don't have to activate this, you don't have to do it. 
You can just keep playing cards from your hand too, and then just play cards or lands from your graveyard. As soon as you play two lands from your graveyard, this the rest is gravy. You already got tons of value getting two lands out of your graveyard. And you can still hold up instants. So where after you it stops you from playing spells, you got four lands. Just cast the instance on someone else's turn. Exactly. Yeah, this card, I, I'm a big fan of this card. I want, If I had a landfall deck, it would be in it immediately. And the fact that we don't just have to play Crucible Wars. Like, the decks, some decks are already playing Crucible Wars because that effect by itself is good enough. Give me more. Please. It, this is actually giving me more than just playing lands from my graveyard. Up next, we have Clever Concealment, two white, white. For an instant, it has Convoke, so you can tap creatures to cast it. And you can phase out any number of target non-land permanents you control. That's pretty sweet. This card is awesome. If you can reliably have that creature count on the board, you don't have to leave up any mana. Just pass the turn. It looks like, oh, I'm tapped out. I ain't got nothing. Boom, they cast their board wipe because you're the big threat. Nah, phase all my stuff out for zero mana. And you'll have to... There's this other card that gives indestructible. But you need to have your commander. You don't even have to have a commander for this card. This uh, actually makes me think of one of my favorite cards of the set, which is not on this list, don't worry. Venerated Rock Priest, it's another way to target all your creatures for free. White keeps getting more and more awesome, awesome board white protection spells, and this is just up there with them. Uh, there's like four or five that are just legitimately very good now. Obviously, Teferi's Protection sits at the top, and it's probably never going to be dethroned. But this is just going to be, it's like number two, number three. It's one of the best ones we've ever seen. I think this is the non, it's not like Teferi's Protection is lame, but I've seen it and I've done it a million times and I'm going to see it a million more times. This to me feels a little bit cooler. I literally, I actively left this out of my uh, Rule Zero Elspeth deck because I wanted, or yeah, I actively left out the Teferi's Protection, Protection for this. Yeah, I like this card. This card's sweet. I really think Convoke is super cool design space and I want to see more like Lethal Schemes and like Sundering Vitae's and Clever Concealments. That's, I love that stuff. Agreed, yeah, com I completely agree with you. I would love to see some more awesome Kavok cards. Next, we have number three that BZ's going to read. It's Modrak, Glory Dominus. Two white white for a four four. And it says if you would create one or more tokens, you get twice that many instead. And there's more words on it. You can pay one white Phyrexian, white Phyrexian and sacrifice two creatures put a freaking indestructible counter on this thing. Creatures and or artifacts. Actually. And or artifacts, so even card, more things. So this card's even better. Yeah, it's a it's a token doubler. This effect is, we know for a fact, this effect is good. A lot of decks will want to get it on the creature. And even if that's a downside for your deck to get it on the creature, it gives itself indestructible. And it only you only ever have to leave up one mana to guarantee you'll have that. Because if a board wipe's coming, sure, okay, I'll give my thing indestructible, sacrifice two creatures that were going to die anyway. Yeah, or like... You just make a bajillion treasures or food or clues with this thing, too. It's it's going to get pretty gross. Obviously, we already have this. Uh, this is just a harder-to-kill version that can punch you. Yes, and to be clear, this is for the 99. We're talking about it. It's a cool commander. It's going to be a great commander. But Modrak, we're talking about in the 99 of any tokens list that you can fit it in. Yeah, let's see Anointed Procession do that. It won't. It can't because it, it can't attack. All right, number two is a land. If you watched our set review, you got to watch us go from C all the way up to B plus as we read this card. It's the Mycosynth Gardens. It's a land. It taps for a colorless, or you can pay one and tap to make a colored mana. You're pretty much never going to do that. Then you pay X and tap it to have it become a copy of a non-token artifact you control. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, is this card awesome. All you need to do is have a decent artifact come for your deck, a utility slot that this can go into where you can afford a colorless land and free us. It's so free, it's kind of like bonkers. Because you suddenly your land, at instant speed, this is not as a sorcery like a lot of these kind of effects would say, can just become the best artifact on the on your battlefield. And what did you give up for it? Nothing. You gave up a landslide. You probably gave up a plane, a mountain, a forest for this card. Maybe even a swamp. Maybe even a swamp. Or an island. Or an island. Exactly. Exactly. You could give up an island and nobody wants to play islands. You know what this is? It's basically an MDFC. So how could we not often suggest that you play it? Yeah, exactly. It's, except for what's cool about like these lands with abilities that, as we talk about, it comes out as a land as you need it. It stays on the battlefield. And then later, when you want it to not be a land, at the best moment, it changes to anything else. This card is, oh God, this card is such an awesome and cool design. I mean, think I, just to think about like the actual like commander games, like we're not going to see Soul Ring. No. A lot of games are going to see Soul Ring. This becomes Soul Ring pretty early. Really early, really quickly. And 
How, like, if you go turn one soul ring into this, and then you can just use the soul ring with it to make it a soul ring, it'll get really silly really fast. Yeah, and also you could just do, like, other cards. You know, you got a Frexy Metamorph copy and something, boom, there you go. You got a big giant monster, you got a Worm Coil Engine, boom. Yeah, there's a million good things to copy. I just, I'm just saying that, like, everyone's playing soul ring. It's probably going to be one of the biggest and most... Everyone who needs Soul Ring is a crutch. Because they, they can't build decks like oh. Boom. Please, please keep watching. Please keep watching. What's next? It's number one. It's the most bannable card in the set, if you ask people who that's, that, to don't be fair, know the criteria of what needs a ban. To be fair, what you said was 100% true. It is 100% the most bannable card in the set. You never know that. It's if, n- if they change the infect rule, then I'm not counting that. Because that's a that's like a different ban. Okay. I this guess. is Elish Norn. Obviously, Mother of Machines is like the most hyped card in the entire set. We don't think it's bannable by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a four seven for five that doubles your ETBs and just cuts theirs right out of the equation. We're talking about it in the ninety nine. This is going to go in every blink deck anyone ever builds forever. Yeah. Also, you you are you keep using exaggerated terms that I would not say. I would never say that this card is not bannable ever by any stretch of the imagination. I wouldn't say that. Oh, is that just me? Yeah, that's just you that says that. It's I, not going to get banned. If I, it gets banned, I'll do a special apology video. Nah, this card could get banned. It is possible. I don't think it's going to. I think the more like, I think there's probably if if this, if there is a hundred universes, it gets banned in probably one or two of them. Oof. I think that's how often Do this those gets universes banned. have better ban lists? <laughs> Uh. Whoa, what does it do? How great is it? It's uh, great, right? I mean, yeah, it's amazing. Also, you don't even have to have Blink Synergy, per se. The actual stack side, um, this is the first time we've ever seen this type of ability, this Torpa Orb, this Hushwing Griff, this Hushbringer, be a one-sided, non-symmetrical effect. And not only is it non-symmetrical, it literally doubles yours afterwards. This card is really good. And the fact that it... Two more mana than Hushwing Griff is like ridiculous. Like, think about that. For two more mana, you get an extra two power, an six extra toughness. six toughness. You lose flying, oh. you, you gain vigilance, but it doesn't affect you and it doubles. What is going on? Like, that's actually kind of an absurd. Like, this card is sweet. It's, it is <laughs> undeniably really, really good, and it will be unfun in certain games for sure. I think one of the biggest things that people may not be expecting this to hose slash. Uh, field of death. Help out is landfall. Yeah, it's gonna hurt field of death really. Bad. I can't believe they printed an answer to my field of death. <laughs> <laughs> this card is. You know what? Ban it. This card is as I think it's gonna be as unfun as it is good. Uh, it's going to be an extremely good card that you're not gonna want to see on the other side of the table ever. Yeah, right. But like, remember Turgrid? I barely do. Yeah, I don't play against that stupid card anymore. Yeah, the trouble is Turgrid was never good in '99. Turgrid's not the coolest character like Magic's ever made. Yeah, Turgrid's not the coolest character Magic made, and she sucked in the '99. <laughs> this, me- this is she's medium. Alice Norn is not the opposite of both of those. Yeah, have you heard of Blink decks? <laughs> she goes in every single yeah. one of them. Have you heard of one of the top ten archetypes ever played? Have you heard of our set review where we talk about <laughs> every single relevant commander card in this entire set, and we definitely didn't forget any? So don't even bother looking for all ten of these in that video because they're all there. You can watch that video right here. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.